Discovery Houston on Air to Ground 2. Are you ready for your media event? We are ready, Rick. Uh, Mike Fossum and I are here. We'll take it and I'll let you know when CBS here. Okay, we copy. CBS Radio Network, this is Houston. Please call Discovery for a voice check. Discovery ISS, good morning from CBS News Radio. How do you hear me? We got you loud and clear, CBS. Uh, how do you have us? Uh, five by five. Mark and Mike, good morning from Kennedy Space Center. A and we'll start with this because John Shannon last night told us that they were actually having trouble coming up with problem areas for today's focused inspections. But apparently they did come up with a few things for you. Mark, what are some of the things that uh, you'll be looking at today? Well, we've got a preliminary uh, indication of what we're, we'll be looking at. We don't have the whole procedure up yet. Uh, but basically there's a little area of discoloration uh, on the nose cap, a very small bit of gap filler uh, in the forward part of the vehicle, um, um, and then uh, a couple other areas on the uh, reinforced carbon carbon, but they look like uh, they're just smudges. Mark, it seems like very slow, painstaking work. What is it like to operate that robot arm during this procedure? Well, I'm going to pass it off to Mike because he's uh, more the arm operator for that one. Hold on a second. I'd say that painstaking is a, a good way to describe it. It's, uh, it's, it is a slow and methodical work. Uh, when we did the inspections on flight day two, of course, we had uh, fairly good views. Uh, now, as we're docked, we have the uh, PMA uh, blocking most of the view out the back window. And so it's, uh, you have to take it very slow and easy and spend a lot of time adjusting cameras to make sure you've... Uh, You've got all the clearances. Mike, as long as we've got you on the line now, uh, of course, you're, you're getting ready for that first EVA tomorrow. Tell us a little bit about that and uh, what you'll be doing. Well, today we're, we're uh, gathering up our tools and equipment. We hauled a lot of the equipment over yesterday after we got the hatches open, and we'll be setting up the suits and doing them some checkouts. Tomorrow for EVA-1, our first space walk, we'll be uh, testing out the stability of the uh, OBSS, orbital boom sensor system, to see, uh, uh, to verify uh, its stability to do, uh, uh, if we need to do on, uh, any kind of repairs or anything from the end of the boom. Looks like we will find out today if uh, you'll get that 13th day and third EVA in. How anxious are you guys to do that? It's, uh, you know, it's one-third of our EVA objectives, uh, so we, we are anxious to do it. I mean, the, uh, that DTO, which, you know, which is uh, to uh, prove that we can repair uh, RCC in flight is uh, pretty valuable to the program. And uh, based on our launch date and the cryo we've been consuming on orbit, I think it looks really good for us. Let's go back to uh, Mark Kelly, uh, and I'd like to talk a little bit about the vehicle itself. Uh, everything that we are hearing and we gather everything that you're hearing shows that you've got a pretty clean vehicle, as uh, uh, the NASA folks like to say. How satisfied uh, are you and the crew that you've uh, got a good, clean vehicle for reentry, re Mark? Well, uh, at this point, uh, we're really satisfied, Peter. Um, we haven't had uh, many problems with Discovery, and, uh, you know, it's really a tribute to all those folks at the Kennedy Space Center and at NASA that get this vehicle ready for flight. It hasn't flown any, in a year. Uh, we've had a couple really minor uh, problems. Uh, you know, they're not even uh, uh, significant enough to be called uh, nuisances. Um, so we're, we're feeling really good about the condition. It's not like being in the simulator where we have failures all the time. Uh, everything works great. Uh, on Discovery right now, and we're really enjoying it. And I'm assuming you got a chance to see some of the pictures that uh, uh, the station crew took on the way in. What was your reaction when you uh, got a chance to look at some of those? Well, Peter, uh, we had a couple images uh, uplinked from the ground. We actually haven't had the opportunity, just because our schedule's so busy, to go through and look at uh, look at, look at the video and and the still photography from the um, from the approach and docking. Uh, if we get a chance, uh, hopefully we'll get a chance later, but we haven't really uh, looked at it yet. Mark Kelly and Mike Fossum, we thank you for joining us. Wish you a safe mission and uh, in, in another week and a half or so, a safe uh, ride home. 
Thanks a lot, Peter. We appreciate it. Discovery ISS. This is Houston ACR. That concludes the CBS Radio Network portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from Fox News Radio. This is a Fox News Radio. And we're standing by, and you're going to have uh, the commanders, uh, Steve Lindsay, Space Mike Bostrom, and myself all available. And say again. SS, this is Fox News Radio. How do you hear me? And Fox News, this is Discovery. We have you loud and clear. Joining us live from the International Space Station is astronaut Mark Kelly, pilot, and also mission specialist Mike Fossum. Good morning, gentlemen, and greetings from Earth. Uh, good morning, uh, Mike. You also have uh, the commander of Discovery, Steve Lindsay, available, too. That's wonderful. Well, uh, good morning, gentlemen. And uh, let's start off with uh, uh, Mark Kelly. Uh, you, you're the pilot of this uh, craft. What is it like to have the controls of the world's most complicated machine? Well, actually, um, uh, on ascent, um, it's it's a, a pretty amazing ride. Uh, you know, I think of it as a runaway train going a thousand miles an hour. It's uh, pretty impressive. The last time I flew was four and a half years ago, and I forgot uh, just what a wild ride it is into orbit. Um, the uh, space shuttle flies uh, pretty much on auto into uh, into orbit. Uh, you know, we can take over if we need to. But it's, a, it's, it's just an amazing vehicle and an amazing trip. And uh, Commander Lindsay, they uh, say that uh, everything has been going so well with this mission that uh, some of the engineers down here are actually bored. Are you surprised that things have gone this smoothly? Well, uh, actually, uh, I'm not all that surprised. You know, we worked uh, really, really hard on this vehicle, uh, especially in the last year and, and in the years previous, to, to try to solve our problems. And uh, so, you know, it looks, of course, we're still collecting data. We've still got more data to collect, more data to analyze, but it, but it, sur it sure looks good. So uh, we're obviously very pleased that, uh, that things are going well. And, uh, and hats off to the, uh, to the shuttle team, all the engineering work that's, uh, that's gone into this over the last several years. And you were on the uh, controls for the rendezvous pitch maneuver that flipped the shuttle 360 degrees just a few hundred feet from the space station. That must have been quite an experience. What was that like? Well, it was, uh, you know, we have, uh, we have procedures, we practice them over and over, and, uh, and actually the vehicle reacted exactly as I expected. Uh, I would tell you, though, I, I don't really like being uh, upside down outside, out of sight of the station at 600 feet below it. But uh, other than that, you know, and I expected that would be a little unnerving, but, the, uh, but the, you know, we followed the procedures. Uh, we have real good procedures, and, uh, and the vehicle uh, flies very, very well, and it did exactly what we expected it to do. Now, Mark, the space station's been up in space for several years now. Lately, it's been short on staff and supplies. You've been in it now for a while. How's it holding up? Well, we, uh, we opened the hatch yesterday, and uh, I was very, very impressed. Uh, I was here four and a half years ago. Uh, Steve and uh, Pierce about the same. And all three of us were, were really impressed with how clean it is, how uncluttered. It really is in, in good shape despite the fact that we haven't been visiting with uh, space shuttles very frequently lately. And we have just a few seconds left uh, for either of you gentlemen. What would you say to kids that are thinking about a career in space at this point, given some of the uncertainties? I would say that the... Uh, I would say that space is uh, is certainly in the possibly in the future for all the kids out there that are dreaming about it. Along with us, uh, when you get down to it, uh, you know we're a bunch of 30, 40 year old uh, guys and gals that are uh, living at every 12 year old's dream, and we realize that and appreciate that and encourage them to uh, to work hard to uh, follow through on those dreams and join us. All right, thank you very much. We've been talking with Commander Steve Lindsay on STS-122, as well as the pilot of the craft, Mark Kelly, who are now at the International Space Station. Thank you, gentlemen, and uh, Godspeed, and uh, good luck with everything. Thank you, Mike. We really appreciate and it. And that is Mike Makowitz uh, reporting. Discovery ISS, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the Fox News radio portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from ABC Radio Network.
Discovery, this is ABC Radio. This is ABC Radio. How do you hear me? And ABC, we have you loud and clear. How are you? Just fine. Good morning, Discovery. It's Vic Ratner at ABC Radio. Question for Commander Steve Lindsay. I wanted to ask you about moving day. One of your trainers has compared moving all the stuff that you have to do, like moving a five room, five rooms worth of furniture into a three room apartment. Can you describe the difficulties of moving all that equipment back and forth through that narrow opening? Well, we're just now uh, getting into that. Um, probably our biggest moving challenge is going to come uh, later today after we get the uh, logistics module open, and that's where the majority of the transfer occurs. We have been doing a lot of mid-deck transfers. For example, uh, yesterday we uh, we moved our uh, spacesuits over from uh, our airlock on the shuttle uh, over to the station airlock to get prepared for EVAs tomorrow. And uh, it's really quite a challenge because you're in zero G. Um, you got to use one hand to kind of translate. You got to go very, very slow. If you go fast, you tend to run into things and bump into other equipment. Um, and uh, as everybody develops their space legs, they'll of course get better and better at it. But uh, fortunately, we have some veterans up here. The space, the station crew, uh, Pavel and Jeff, been up here a while. They're doing a lot of the transfer. Thomas Ryder is doing a lot of the transfer, and he's got six months on the space station mirror before. So uh, it's great to have those veterans up there to help us with uh, with the challenges of transfer. And you've got a whole bunch of stuff, Commander, that you have to bring back from the space station. What do you physically do in order to move this? Well, it's it's kind of an interesting uh, choreography we have to go through. There's not we we can't really uh, pull everything out of our logistics module and put it in space station, or it'd be so crowded nobody could move through it. So what we actually do is we take. Uh, we try to pull all of the stuff that we're going to return and put that temporarily into the logistics module um, before we pull all the other stuff out um, so that we keep station such that we can move around on it. So it's kind of a shell game uh, where you have to uh, make room for something before you can pull something else out. Question for Mike Fossum. How was the ride up for a rookie? This is Mike. Uh, the ride up was uh, just better than I'd ever expected. It was, a, uh, you know, it started off uh, feeling very much like it does in the simulator we have in Houston that simulates the acceleration by tipping you over on its back. I think the biggest, uh, the biggest difference was when it uh, kicked in. I think we lost the end of Mike Fossum's answer. If you could hear me, was there a lot of banging and rattling around? Yeah, I'm sorry, I broke off there. This is Mike again. I think the biggest change was when we, uh, when they, uh, when they throttled up the engines at about a minute into the flight, about 30 seconds in, they throttled down a little bit to reduce the dynamic pressure, and then when they throttled back up to pull. Uh, uh, full throttle. We, uh, of course, uh, lost some weight during that time, and I really felt it uh, zooming, if you will, and then it, the pressure just kept building and building and, uh, until we reached the three Gs, and then suddenly nothing, and we're in space. Uh, simply amazing. Question for Steve Lindsay or Mark Kelly. Do either of you guys have any idea what those splotches are on the nose cap? turkey vulture got in the way on the way up? No, we don't think so. We were we were actually watching them out our window as we were getting ready to launch, and we had one, uh, one the first couple launch camps, we had quite a few circling around. This one, we saw one circling around one time, and then he kind of went away, so uh, I didn't, at least we didn't see anything out the window. One more question for Steve Lindsay. When you walked, uh, pulled into the uh, ISS, the microphones were off. What were your first words coming through the hatch, and how were you received? Well, I don't remember what my first words were. Well, I guess it was hi. But uh, we, uh, 
We were received very, very warmly by the uh, by uh, by Pavel and Jeff. I think I think they were glad to see us, and uh, we were certainly glad to see them. And uh, a lot of smiles all the way around. And uh, so we uh, kind of chatted and caught up real quick, and then uh, then we got to work. So, but it was uh, there was nothing quite to describe what it's like to. Uh, you know, from one vehicle that's in space to go dock with another vehicle in space and then open hatches and go from your vehicle to a new vehicle, uh, in, you know, out in space. I mean, it's just really a neat feeling to go do that. Thanks a lot. Godspeed, Discovery, ABC Radio out. Copy. Discovery, ISS. This is Houston ACR. That concludes the ABC Radio Network portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from National Public Radio. And you're up. NPR Discovery, ISS. This is Robert Siegel with National Public Radio. How do you hear me? Good morning, Robert. We have you loud and clear. How are us? I hear you fine. Uh, and I have a question uh, first for Steve Lindsay about that backflip maneuver yesterday. Uh, to do it, I gather you had to overcome some concerns about uh, a thermostat on a thruster that wasn't functioning properly. I want you to explain to us how you keep a shuttle warm in flight. Well, uh, we keep the shuttle warm much like uh, you do on Earth. Uh, if you don't have air conditioning or heating or anything like that, um, if it's a sunny day, you go out and you get in the sun, and the sun will warm you up. So uh, what, what the, uh, our controllers did is come up, came up with some attitudes uh, on rendezvous day and the day before. Um, basically a, what's called a solar inertial attitudes and uh, what that means is we keep pointing at the sun and we keep that thruster in the sun and uh, that can uh, and kind of take the place of the heater so what they did is kept that thruster warm enough um, and it has a if it gets too cold it'll start leaking and that was our concern but by keeping it warm enough then we were legal to fire it and once we fired it then it would stay warm and that enabled us to use the, uh, the small thrusters for the uh, for the rendezvous yesterday which which basically makes it a, a more precise flying task uh, takes a little little of the uh, not doesn't take quite as uh, it's not quite as hard to fly uh, when you have those little thrusters so you use some low-tech solar energy to uh, to to accomplish that mission Uh, I, as a veteran of, of shuttle uh, missions, uh, Mark Kelly, do you find that these uh, reports of splotches or bits of gap filler that are protruding or a piece of foam came off, uh, are these signs that the shuttle is showing its age or have these things happened on all flights and now with our concerns about safety we're just hearing a lot more about them? Well, Robert, the, uh, the reasons, you know, we... Uh, we never had the capability to pull before to uh, see the underside of the vehicle like we do now. So we have a lot of cameras we use uh, during liftoff, and then part of that um, RPM, the maneuver to uh, flip the vehicle over when we get underneath the space station to take video. We never did that before either. So we can see a lot more than we can now. And um, we've got a pretty clean uh, underside of Discovery. We're going to take a closer look at it today. But I imagine that... Uh, you know, all shuttle flights have probably had in the past had little pieces of gap filler sticking out and little blotches here and there. So we're really happy with what we know about the condition of the vehicle right now, and we're going to find out a little bit more uh, uh, later today and uh, into tomorrow. The shuttle uh, that you are piloting was designed uh, by my calculations back when you were at most in high school, if not, if not younger than that. As a pilot, uh, do you know what you would like a more modern craft uh, to be able to do when when shuttle flights are retired in, in 2010. Well, Robert, the uh, first space shuttle launch, I was in the 10th grade. Uh, I think it was April 18, 1981, and uh, I might have been in the 11th grade. But anyway, it was uh, was a while ago. Uh, but the shuttle's a great vehicle. It uh, uh, you, we don't have many problems with it at all. I mean, it could keep flying, and we're going to keep flying it into 2010. For the next generation vehicle, you know, the number one thing I would like out of it is that that, that it could go somewhere other than Earth orbit. Uh, and we're planning on doing that. We're designing a vehicle that's going to be able to go to the space station, but it's also go, going to go to the go to the moon. And uh, it ultimately will be used as a return vehicle coming back from Mars. So, you know, we're really looking forward to that. And, you know, I think, uh, you know, it's an exciting time for NASA. 
One last question for Steve Lindsay. Uh, for the half of Americans who in polls say they don't think the shuttle missions are worth it, what do you say to them? Well, what I, what I would say to that is, uh, is the kind of work we do uh, going after space exploration, things like that, is, uh, is an investment in our future. And, you know, just like we invest in research in universities and things like that, um, a lot of times, you know, if you look back at the space program when we went to, went to the moon back in the 60s and, and on to the shuttle program, um, these things that we do, the space, human space flight is hard. It's hard work. It's difficult to do. It's challenging. Uh, it has, has risks associated with it. But, uh, mm -hmm. you know, usually when you go after something that's a real challenge, usually you discover things and you learn new things and you, do, you have to develop new technologies to make that happen. And in that process, you end up generating an awful lot of things that are used every day on Earth and make to make life better for folks on Earth. So what I would say is it's an investment. It, yeah, it costs money, but uh, but the return is huge. Uh, the numbers I've heard before is 8 or $9 to every one spent on space. I don't know what that number is today, but there, I have no doubt that as we go into the exploration of business here and as we continue with shuttle and station, that the things we're going to come out of it will yield all kinds of new things that we really, really haven't even thought about today. Steve Lindsay and Mark Kelly, thanks to both of you, and good luck. Thank you. Discovery, ISS. This is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. And Discovery Houston, thanks for the uh, media event, and thanks to the media clients also. And guys, when you get